Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on iDRAC. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. This video is going to be uh, specifically focused on iDRAC. Uh, if you're not familiar with iDRAC, that is uh, Dell's remote access controller. Essentially, if you want to uh, remote in to a server that you aren't uh, close to or on site with, uh, to, let's say you have servers in different co-locations, uh, this is how you would basically manage your servers, right? Uh, so what we're going to do in this video, uh, we're going to show you the different types of licenses, which are Express and Enterprise, and then we're going to show you how to upgrade from Express to Enterprise and then we're going to show you how to log into the iDRAC uh, web interface. Let's get going. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to upgrade your iDRAC Express license to an enterprise license. So one of the main reasons why you would want a enterprise license is because it allows you to use that dedicated iDRAC port on the back of your server. Um, if you just have an Express license, you have to use one of your NIC ports in order to log into the iDRAC web interface and to use iDRAC. But with iDRAC Enterprise, you can go ahead and plug in some ethernet cable into that dedicated iDRAC port and you can use that for all of your iDRAC network traffic. Um, and then the other neat thing about iDRAC X Enterprise and a reason why you'd probably want to upgrade to iDRAC Enterprise is that you have access to the iDRAC virtual console. So you're able to, as long as you're connected to the network, you can go ahead and access the iDRAC web interface and access that virtual console and actually control your server from another device as long as you're connected to that network. There's a ton of reasons why you would want to go ahead and upgrade to an enterprise license and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how do you check what license you currently have and then once we do that we will go ahead and move on with the license upgrade. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and turn on our server and during post you want to go ahead and press F2 so we can enter into system setup. Once in system setup we want to go down to iDRAC settings and once we're under iDRAC settings we want to do system summary and right here you can see where it says iDRAC license it says express so the server we're using right now has an express license and we're going to upgrade that to an enterprise license so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now so we're just going to go back to the home screen for system setup. Now there's a few things I want to go over first before we go ahead and get into this. So essentially what we're going to do is connect the iDRAC to the network. So we can go ahead and type in the IP address and access the web interface. So I'm going to show you how to do this and it'll make a little bit more sense as we go through it. Um, and then the other thing we're going to need to do is that we're going to need an iDRAC Enterprise license file. There's many places that you can go ahead and purchase this um, and if you're interested in one you can go ahead and email us at sales at cloudnetches.com and you can go ahead and purchase one from us. So if that's something you're interested in like I said go ahead and email us at sales at cloudnetches.com and we'll go ahead and hook you up. That is essentially the file that we're going to need so we can upload it to the iDRAC web interface and so we can go ahead and do that license upgrade. Uh, but before we can get into the iDRAC web interface, we need to go ahead and configure the server's network information or the iDRAC network settings if you haven't already. So like I said, we want to go to system setup. So we're going to go into iDRAC settings. And then once in iDRAC settings, we want to go down to network. Once in network, we want to go ahead and scroll down to where it says IPv4 settings. And then we're going to enable DHCP. Now, if you don't know how to configure an IP address, we have a video later on in our series that will show you how to configure the IP address for this server. Um, the only difference is, is that it will be in the lifecycle controller network settings, setting the IP address so the device can connect to the internet, um, but it's not going to set the iDRAC IP, which really the information is going to be the exact same that it is in this video. It's just in a different area and it's setting an IP address for a different reason. So 
if you need any help or need to refer to anything, that's a great place to start. Um, but if you wanna go ahead and follow along, following these steps should be no problem. You just wanna make sure that your server's actually connected to the internet, whether it's through a switch or whether it's directly into the network. We currently have this server connected into a switch, which is set up in a VLAN, uh, but you don't have to do it that way. And that will go ahead and automatically configure the static IP, the static gateway, and the static subnet mask. And then what we want to do is if you want, you can go ahead and use DHCP for the DNS server address, but we're gonna go ahead and enter one in manually, but you don't have to do it this way. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and back out and then back out again, and then we want to save our changes. And we have successfully configured our iDRAC IP address, and now we'll be able to log into the iDRAC web interface and go ahead and upgrade our license. So what we want to do now is we want to log on to a, another device, whether it's desktop or laptop. Um, we just wanna make sure that this device is connected to the same network that our server is connected to. What we want to do is open up a web browser and we're going to type in that iDRAC IP address that we set. And this will go ahead and take us to the iDRAC login screen. So the login information is going to be root for the username. And the password is going to be Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N. And then once we type in that information, we can log in. And if you want to change the password, I recommend doing so for security purposes. But for this video specifically, we're going to just go ahead and keep the default password. Once we've done that, we have successfully logged into the iDrive web interface. And what we want to do is you want to click on the configuration tab and then go to license and in here you want to click on this little drop down and then click on import right here this is where we're going to open up our file explorer so we can put in that iDRAC license and then we want to select that iDRAC license and then we want to click on upload and we have successfully uploaded our license. So what we're going to do is go ahead and log out and then log back in. And already at the login screen, you can see where it says enterprise. And there we have it. We have successfully upgraded our express license to an enterprise license. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and head back to the server and we're going to check to see if that change was made. Um, and we'll be right back. So we are back on our server, so we're gonna go back into system setup by pressing F2. And then we want to go back to iDRAC settings. And in iDRAC settings, we want to do system summary. And as you can see right here, where it says iDRAC license. Earlier it said express, but now it says enterprise. So our upgrade did indeed work, and we have successfully upgraded from an express license to an enterprise license. So if you guys found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're looking to build a custom server or looking for any server upgrades, uh, we got HP, Dell, Supermicro servers in stock. We also have AMD Ryzen servers, AMD Epic, Intel Scalable servers. If you're interested in anything I just said, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks for stopping by.